Hey y'all, what's up? It's Lauren and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about book haul. Uh, this past week was kind of like a four day weekend for me because my mom and brother and everyone, um, my family was home. And so yeah, it was kind of like a four day weekend. Um, so we went to like two or three, we went to it. This place in my area called Edmund Kay's, and we went to an antique store, and we got some books there. So, it's been a very bookish weekend, and I finished two books, and I started on another one. So, that is, like, the highlight of my weekend, which is okay, because I like me some books. Um, yeah, this is a pretty, like, substantial-sized book haul. So, I'm, oh, and we went to Goodwill and got some, too, um, uh, which... I'm very excited about. Whew, excuse me. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The first book is <clears throat> Water for Elephants by Sarah Sarah Gruen. It is on my list. It's been on my list for a little while. Um, I've heard a lot of like good things about the book. And as I was like checking out at Goodwill, the girl was like, oh my gosh, I don't keep many books, but this book was so amazing that I kept it. So I was like, yep. We gonna read that book, so we're gonna read it, and it's been on my list for like ever, and I've always wanted to get it, and I would go to my local bookstore, my local used bookstore, which is where I always shop first, and then I, you know, Barnes and Nobles is my last resort, but anyway, so we, I went to my, uh, it was, lo it was Goodwill, and I found it, and I it was like 99 cents, and usually at this used bookstore, it's like four or five dollars. I'm like, 99 cents? Four dollars? We're gonna get it. So we got it and it was so awesome. I could not believe that I found it. I tried watching the video when it was on Netflix, and then I made it halfway through and then just stopped. I don't know why. I was watching something else, but I really, really wanted this. This was on my list and I was so excited to see that it was there. Uh, the next book we have is. Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson, I have heard a lot about her um, through the YA universe, and it seems very interesting. Um, it's about these two best friends, and one of them goes missing, and so the one that goes missing leaves her a little, like, list of things to do over the summer, and I think that was, was really cute, and I really wanted to read it. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to reading that. And I got it from my local bookstore. Um, this next one I got also from a Goodwill. It's called The Day Diana Died. Those of y'all who don't know, I'm an Anglophile, so I love everything British, you know, royal family related. Pretty much anything British. If y'all saw my room, y'all would be like, dang, she's obsessed. I've got issues, but that's okay. Um... But yeah, I found it, and it's written by Christopher Anderson, who also has written um, other books about the royals. Um, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. It has beautiful, she's so gorgeous, it has beautiful hair on the front, and then it has a quote on the back, and basically it's just, it goes, where were you the day Diana died? Like the assassination, like the assassination of JFK, the tragic death of the Princess of Wales is one of those defining benchmarks in history. An event that touched each and every one of us so profoundly, we will never forget the moment we heard the news. So, I'm really looking forward to that because I love anything about my girl Diana. Um, and I love, you know, learning about her more because I think she's just absolutely gorgeous. I love it. And it has pictures on the inside too. This next book I was so excited to find because it's been on my list. Full price, they are $15.00. Half price or like used, they were, this one in particular was $6. And I found this for 99 cents. So I am obsessed with bride fiction, specifically Christian bride fiction. And because it's just so nice, warm and fluffy and it makes you feel good. Um, and this has been on my list forever. It's highlighted in blue, which I will get to my, showing you on my list soon. And how I organize it soon. But this has been on my list forever. And so I found it there. I found it at Goodwill of all places. And I'm like, 99 cents? This girl's gonna get it. So I got it. And I was really excited to be able to get something like that. Um, so yeah. 
And it's just about these uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six women. And um, it's, I'm going to read the back. It goes, sometimes love requires a little persuasion. Take an adventurous ride along the bumpy trail to love as six independent women of yesteryear are cautiously courted into matrimony by men they have both intrigued and wounded. Six best-selling authors have penned six unique stories. And I'm really looking forward to it. So, and then it, it all, of course, I mean, it's just so gorgeous. And I'm so excited that I found it because it's on my line, on my list. I have like two or three of these now. I have one on the shelf behind me and then I have another one on my TBR shelf. I'm obsessed with these books. I really am. They're like the romance collection and the bride collection books. Um, this next one I can add to my British shelf. It goes to Marry an English Lord by Gail Mc... Matt Cole and Carol McD Wallace. Um, basically, it's just talking about the American uh, heiresses. If y'all don't know what American heiresses are, it, long story short, they are the young, like, over here in America during, like, the 1800s and 1900s, um, women did have a little bit more say than women in Britain because Britain was always behind the times, um, which is okay. Um, so what our American heiresses were, was like, like for example, this, uh, the person on the front is actually Consuelo uh, Vanderbilt. She was an American heiress, and so the parents would take, um, their daughters, and they would ship them over to Great Britain, so their daughters could find men with wealthy English titles, like dukes, lords, um, you know, earls, viscounts, things like that, and they would marry them for the title. Um, heiresses, you could be an heiress over here in America, so you could inherit a woman, you could be a woman and inherit your father's stuff, um, like, you know, your father's businesses and stuff, um, whereas in, in the, in Britain you couldn't, um, and it goes, an inspiration for the peculiar, peculiar, popular television series Downton Abbey, which we will get into that later because I'm obsessed with that TV show, that's my show. Anyways, um, so I'm just going to read this. It goes, in 1895, nine American girls, including a Vanderbilt, LaRoche, uh, Rogers, and Whitney, all married peers of the British uh, realm. Among them, a duke, an earl, three barons, a knight, and a knight. It was the peak year of social phenomenon that began in the Gilded Age after the Civil War, which was in the 1860s, um, and handed down the legacy of Anglomania, preppies, Anglomania, <laughs> um, preppies, and the world of the television series Downton Abbey. All in all, more than 100 American heiresses invaded Britannia and sweeped, swapped dollars for titles. Filled with a wealth of historical personalities and grand houses, gossipy anecdotes, and a feature called Comme il faut. I don't know how to, I'm not French, and I don't speak French, so I don't know how to say that. The very finest points of etiquette that ruled Victorian and Edward Edwardian society to marry an English lord is their story. So it's like nonfiction, but what's really cool is you get like prints and stuff from like their magazines from like back in the day, back then. Um, so like this would be about earning a title and stuff like that, and you get that's Queen Mary right there, I think. Um, but yeah. You get, like, all these little different photographs and these different, different things. Um, so I'm really excited about that. It's nonfiction, and I get to add it <clears throat> to the shelf behind me. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Excuse me. Um, but yeah, that's one of the ones I'm very, very, very excited about. Um, so our next book is, and it's a heavy one. Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. I have actually, it's on my classics I want to read list. Um, I watched the movie and I was like, that's really, really good. So I found a, a I finally found an edition that I want to read. Um, I tried finding it in the little classic editions that I have back behind me and I couldn't find it. So I found this one and I thought, hey, it's not too bad. The print's not too bad. And the price wasn't too bad, so I decided I'd get it. Basically, it goes, um, Pever and Volhonsky are at once, and these are who, um, translated it from Russian. Um, but it is by Leo Tolstoy, and it goes, uh, I'm gonna read y'all the inside. It goes, 
Anna Karenina has beauty, social position, wealth, a husband, and an adored son. But her existence seems empty when she meets the dashing officer, Count Vronsky. She rejects her marriage and re and turns him turns to him to fulfill her passionate nature. With devastating results, one of the world's greatest novels, Anna Karenina, is both an immortal drama of personal conflict and social scandal and a vivid, richly textured panorama of 19th century Russia. So I'm really excited to read it. It's, I'm going to add it to my classics list. It's thick, but it's one of the ones that I just found interesting that I really, really wanted to read. Uh, the next one is Remember Me by Sophie Kinsella. I thought my mom, my mom found it. And I was like, ooh, Sophie Kinsella, let's read one of her books. Um, I just didn't know where to start, and I just thought, hey, you know, why don't I just pick this one up and look at it and start reading it? Um, because of the fact that it is by Sophie Kinsella. I've heard a lot about it. I know one channel in particular, uh, Bookables, she is a huge Sophie Kinsella fan, so and she really has made me want to pick up Sophie Kinsella and, like, read her. And so I'm excited about it. And it's about a girl named... Uh, Lexi's smart, and she wakes up in a London hospital. She's in for a big surprise. Her teeth are perfect. Her body is toned, and her handbag is Vuitton. Um, having survived a car accident, she um, has lost a big chunk of her memory, three years to be exact, and she's about to find out just how much things have changed. So, I'm really, that sounds really interesting, and I'm really looking forward to reading um, this, especially since it's by... Sophie Kinsella, um, and I really like the cover too, so that's another book that we got. This next one has always been on my list, and I've been looking for it everywhere, but it's called Bitter Blood by Jerry Bledsoe. Fun fact, I am from North Carolina, and I live in the Greensboro part. I live in Greensboro, North Carolina, so you have the state, and I am right smack dab in the middle almost. Um, you go one way, you go to the coast, you go the other way, and you go to the mountains. So we're placed pretty perfectly in North Carolina. Um, so this does take place in North Carolina, as a matter of fact. Actually, it's a writer. He's a writer from my local newspaper, the Greensboro News and Record. Um, and he, it's his coverage of the um, bitter blood, the, this case. So I'm going to read y'all what it's about. Um, a shockingly true, it is a true story, so all of this has happened, and it happened here in, in North Carolina. A shockingly true account of bizarre intrigue and brutal murder in a proud old Southern family network. The dying began on a Sunday. A feisty millionaire widow and her beautiful daughter are murdered, gangland style, in their big house in Louisville, Kentucky. Months later, another wealthy widow and her prominent son and daughter-in-law are also slain one night in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. The mystified police first suspect a professional killer, then turn their focus to family. The Sharps, the Newsoms, the Lynches, three well-to-do families, all linked by an aristocratic young mother, Susie Sharp Newsom Lynch. Could this former child princess and one-time fraternity sweetheart, the daughter, granddaughter, ex-sister, and ex-daughter-in-law be involved in these barbarous murders? And what about her close and obsessive first cousin, Fritz Klinner, who dreams of succeeding in his nationally own, his nationally known successful doc doctor father? In this vivid, in this tightly wound and un unrelenting tale, events build to a horrifyingly dramatic and shattering conclusion that leaves the remaining family members and citizens of two states devastated. So I thought that was really, really cool. And I've always wanted to get it. I might get another edition, but I found it and I was like, I'm going to buy this. I'm going to get it. So that's what I did. And then this last one I found at the antique store, and that is The Crown Jewels by Anna Kie. Well, yeah. And it's the ofi official illustrated history. So we get a nice, like, good talk about the jewels and, and the other things that is related to like the crown jewels and the family and how things are made and such and it's just beautiful and I can add it and it's got my girl Victoria on the back of it, my favorite queen on the back of it. So we get to see that and I get to add it to my shelf, another thing I get to add to my British shelf. Um, so yeah, 
that's it for now. I hope y'all have a great day. Hit the subscription button down below. Hit the notification button down below. Also, I have an Instagram and Goodreads. My Instagram is Live Loves Books uh, 17 and my Goodreads is Lauren Live Loves Books 17. Um, I hope to see y'all again soon. I love y'all. Bye.